Hey gang, good evening, Pastor Jerry here. How y'all doing? Um, I'm here at my home and I was getting ready to go to bed, but this issue is on my heart so heavy tonight. And it's been there for, since March. And uh, I've been really grieved about it, been really hurt about it. And I've been very silent on social media about it. And, uh, and, and it has nothing to do with Corona. It has nothing to do with Mr. Floyd, it has nothing to do with Minnesota, it has nothing to do with BLM, it has nothing to do with all this other stuff that we're seeing in the world. But what it has to do is the Christian response to all that. And you never really know how or what's in something until it's squeezed, until pressure comes around it. And I'm seeing right now what a lot of, not every, but what a lot of Christians are made of. And they're very scared, they're very immature, they're very selfish, they're very self-seeking. And they really don't know what they're doing when they open their mouths. And instead of praying for people that disagree with them, instead of praying for things that they see that they know aren't godly, instead of praying for our leaders, they are literally usurping the authority of God and they are throwing leaders under the buses. And the issue is this, we who are Christians have a mandate to pray for our leaders, not to talk about them, not to disparage them, not to make them kind of look bad. Our job as Christians is to pray for them. And so here's what I'm seeing. Here, here, here is the danger that we're in right now as Christians. And I'm talking to Christians, people who say they go to church, who say they're on fire for the Lord, who say that they can hear from God. But the issue is that we may know the word, but we're not obeying the word. And if you don't know the word, then I want to share with you guys some words from the word of God that can really help you be at peace. First of all, the Bible says this. He says that anyone who's in authority, he's allowed them to be there. Whether you like Trump or not, whether you like Obama or not, whether you like Pelosi or not, whether you like um, um, Sisolak or not, whether you like your governor in Texas, your governor in Florida, your governor in Michigan, for whatever reason, God has allowed them to be in authority. So, when you speak against that person, you're speaking against God's sovereignty. You're speaking against God's decision. And you can say, well, people didn't vote. That's not God's fault. But when you speak negatively against that person, you're telling God that he's doing something wrong. The next thing is this. I spoke to a pastor today about this issue and what he told me next just broke my heart. He's been getting death threats because he won't take sides. He won't take sides on the white side or black side or police side. And it blew me away that any, and, and these are death threats from Christians, from Christians, people who say they love God. And we've got to sit back, step back, and seek God. The Bible says in Isaiah that said that he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. These things that are going on with Corona, with the mask, with the mandate, with George Floyd, with, with BLM, with, with, with Ahmaud Arbery, they are distractions to get our eyes off of God's purpose. And our purpose as Christians is to pray and believe God because see, we have exchanged G's. We have left G-O-D for the G-O-V-T. We're relying too much on the government and not enough on God. And yes, the government can do great things, but that's the same situation that, that the Israelites got into and the same situation that the Jews got into when they wanted a king. And now we have a king, whether he's a Democrat or a Republican, because we voted him in, either by your vote or, or your non-vote. So, in the, and so, Here's what I'm going to say. I don't know where you go to church. I know this may go all over the world. Praise God. But your goal is to pray for your pastor. Your goal is to pray for your leaders. 
Your goal is to pray for the people who you who represent your state, your county, your government. It's not to bash them. And whether you are a new Christian, uh, a seasoned Christian, your goal is to not put things on Facebook that demonize politicians. Your goal on Facebook is to glorify God, lift up God, and use your platform on social media to influence and turn people towards Jesus. Show your family pictures, show your vacation vision, but it's not there to disparage leaders. The next thing this is causing is a division in church. When we get to heaven, there won't be a black section, a white section, a Mexican session, section, a Native American section, a Filipino section, uh, an Asian section. There's going to be one section, and that's called those who are in heaven. So why do we want to sectionize that here in, in, uh, on earth? And when you begin to talk about Democrats and Republicans, when you begin to talk about blacks and whites, when you begin to talk about um, blacks should have this and whites should have this, you now begin to segregate. And there is no mention of racism in the Bible in the sense of God did not create race. He created the human race and man created racism and man created culture. And when you continually talk about these things, it brings division in the church because everyone's not going to agree with you. Everyone's not going to see your side of it. And it's okay. It's okay. That's what makes us human. That's what makes us people. We have a free mind. And so I'm going to share with you some verses real quick. Titus 3.10 says, As a person who stirs up division, after warning him once and then twice, it says, have nothing to do with him. So if you're stirring up division on Facebook and it's causing people in your church to have issues with you, I challenge you to stop right now because it's not of the Lord. Um, Romans 16, 17 says, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. You want to avoid them because they are either wolves they're goats, or I said a few weeks ago, they're jackasses. And those three kind of people, don't be around them. Anyone who causes division amongst the body, anyone who causes division amongst in your pastor, anyone who causes division in the church, you leave them alone. You, you isolate them. You pray for them, but you leave them alone. Um... Ephesians 5.11 says, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. When you talk about your pastor, when you talk about your leadership, when you talk about a governor, when you talk about a president, you are taking part in an unfruitful conversation. Um, Ephesians 4.3 says, We should be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. What does that mean? I may not agree with the Democrat or the Republican or the Independent, but my goal is to have unity, not agreement, but unity. And unity is, what, is when you put aside your differences for a common goal. And our goal is to get people in heaven, to get people saved, and to glorify Christ. It's not to spout out our political views. It's not. The Bible says that we're bought with a price. So when we're bought with a price, God puts his bridle in our mouth. And we only have a conversation about what he says to have a conversation about. Just because a mandate comes down or doesn't come down and we don't like it, we don't just go off on Facebook and talk about a president or a governor. You don't do that. That's immaturity. That's, that's, that's childish. And, and, and the Bible speaks against it. And then now look at this here. Um, when you are... A leader of your church when you are a deacon a pastor a minister a department head and you begin to spout off about your opinion your opinion people in your church are watching you people who you're trying to lead and minister to are watching you and it's one thing to say something to someone that they don't agree with that's biblical like for instance hey you shouldn't beat your wife hey you should tithe Hey, you should um, um, teach your kids something. That's one thing. But when you make a, a rash comment about their political agreement or their, the way they live, 
it makes them not trust you. And then you destroy every ability to minister to them as a leader in the church. Think about that for a second. Think about that for a second. If you giving your opinion on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter destroys your ability to witness to someone as a Christian who's following you, then your opinion should stay with yourself. Your opinion should not be on social media. Your opinion should be with yourself and you should pray about everything that you put on social media because you are bought with a price. You're not your own. Your temple, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you just can't pop off and say whatever you want to say. It's not. And then here's the next thing. If someone says something stupid on Facebook, why you got to respond? Why? Or why you got to respond back to them on Facebook? The majority of things that I see on Facebook, if I know the person, I will text them personally or I will call them and say, hey, listen, you know what? Um, that probably wasn't the best thing to say. Because when you go back and forth on Facebook, you show the whole world both how immature you are. Now, granted, if you, if you say something once, that's one thing. But if you go back and forth for days, come on now. Come on now. Romans 14, 21 says this. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything by which your brother stumbles. What that simply means for us is this. If something that you feel free to do causes your brother or sister in the body to fall, to stumble, to sin, then you shouldn't do it, no matter how free you are. And as a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 10, 23 says, I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. So the things that you have the right to say, they are not always beneficial. And then it says, I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. If what you're putting on social media isn't glorifying God and hurting someone else, it's not constructive, it's not wholesome, and it's sinful, and you'll be judged for it. Think about that. Your opinion does not have to be spewed every time you wake up. First Corinthians eight, nine says, be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Now, that doesn't mean that if someone doesn't agree with you that they're weak. It means that if someone doesn't agree with you and they see you as a leader, they see you as a Christian, and, and, and in the way you say it, it becomes hurtful and harmful, then you've lost that person. You've lost influence with that person. You've lost the ability to lead them to Christ and or you've lost the ability to show them how to live like Chris. And you've lost influence with the people that they know who may not be saved also too. So in closing, this is not to the, the members of our church, of, of Empower Life Church. This is to the body of Christ. We have a lot of Christians on Facebook and a lot of Christians I don't know on Facebook. And our job as Christians on Facebook is to have a platform of praise not of being a potty mouth, not of complaining and griping. Our platform is to glorify God, is to lift him up, is to, is to show, our, show off our family pictures, show off our kids' graduation, show off our, our, um, show off our new house, whatever the case may be. It is not to demonize politicians. It's not to to demonize their decisions. We should pray for them, thus saith the Lord. And so share this, whatever you want to do. Um, but it's the word of God. I've read you scripture upon scripture upon scripture about how we should act in this time. 
COVID is not our enemy. Um, the police aren't our enemy. The whites aren't our enemy. The blacks aren't our enemy. Our enemy is one, one person. His name is Lucifer. And the Bible says in John 10, 10, that, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And then he says, but I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And so I challenge you to get your eyes off of man and woman and on to Christ, the author and finish of our faith. The Bible says in Acts 17, 28, it says, in Christ, we live and move and have our identity. Our identity is not as Americans. It's not as blacks. It's not as whites. It's not as Mexicans or Filipinos or, or Native Americans or Asians. Our identity is Christian first. Is Christian first. And everything that we do flows from the Christian filter. Everything we think and say and do flows out of our oneness with Christ, out of our nature with Christ Jesus. Our nature is God. Our nature is, our nature is love and patience. The Bible says that it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So it is our nature. Uh, Galatians 5, 16 talks about the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, long suffering, Hate and anger are anti-fruits. They're fruit killers. So church, I challenge you guys to live holy, to live on fire for God, and don't let your circumstances determine your vision. Don't let your circumstances determine how you see people. There's only two things to fight in this world, Satan and sometimes our own experiences. So from this day on, you know where I stand. I hope you stand with me. But let's keep all this trash off of Facebook, off of Instagram. Let's keep this trash off of social media so the world can see that we're different. See, the world can't see a difference between us and them because we talk like them. But when we talk like him, they'll see a difference. All right. Love you guys. Have a great Thursday night, Friday night. And um, we'll see you at church on Sunday. Be blessed. See you.